Okay, welcome to each other's 40 Days Media Luncheon. Our players are running back Terrell Dorsey, quarterback Bart Williams, head coach Matt Mitchell in the middle. Coach, if you can talk about the uh, victory at Hillsdale, and uh, we'll move on to Finley. Uh, great job by our team. I was really proud of our coaches and players. We uh, faced some adversity on Saturday. Uh, some of the adversity was self-inflicted adversity, and some of the adversity was out of our control. But I thought our reaction to adversity, how we overcame it, our resiliency, our chemistry, um, the grit that we showed was – uh, on full display um, in, in that game. So you knew it was going to be that type of a game based on the style of play. You know, our offense only had nine possessions <clears throat> um, and uh, scored on, on five of those. And, uh, you know, th those are the type of ball games that you're going to get with Hillsdale College. We mentioned that heading in. So when I look at the game and look at the, you know, our, our entire team, we, we won most of the statistical battles that we care about. Um, we were, um, if you include the turnovers on downs, we were plus four in turnover margin. Uh, we eclipsed them on explosive play differential. Besides one pass play, they didn't really have a whole lot of explosive plays. Uh, we were great in the red zone. Uh, we had one sloppy possession in the red zone, but other than that, we scored touchdowns. And we were obviously, you know, our defense did a really good job holding them to 10 points inside the red zone on five trips. And, um, you know, third down conversion percentage. Um, you know, I think we, we converted 58% of our third downs, and they only converted 25% uh, of their third downs. So that was the tail of the tape. Um, it was a type of game where it was, uh, you know, going to be that style of game, and we stuck with it. There wasn't any panic in our locker room. There wasn't any panic with our team. And, uh, you know, we got that two-score lead. Uh, that was really huge. You know, it was just the style of play was going to be hard to come back. And then, uh, to me, kind of one of the biggest drives of the game, uh, we, we ran the ball, I think, um, you know, nine, ten consecutive times and punched in that touchdown to get to a three-score game. So um, guys stuck together. Guys played well. Uh, it was the first time that we have trailed in 2016. Uh, eight games in, but uh, there was no panic. And uh, a lot of the things I think that we try to do within our program from January up to this point were in full display, you know, at Hillsdale. And uh, like I said, I was proud of our coaches and players for their performance to get us to, uh, you know, 8-0. And um, we're in a position right now where the only undefeated team in our region. And, um, you know, we uh, are obviously looking forward to this uh, contest coming up here Saturday against Finley in an attempt to try to uh, push our record to 9-0. So when you Look at that game, you first have to start with, uh, it's going to be senior day. It's the last regular season game. Uh, we have a, a tremendous senior class. This is a senior class that, um, you know, embodies our football program. Uh, they're, they're great students. They're great um, people. Uh, the, you know, we, we've just had a really strong core of seniors. And um, this will be the last time for them to step out in a regular season game and, and honor them. And uh, got to go against, you know, Finley, who's improving. I think when you take a look at Finley, They've got a lot of pieces to the puzzle back on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, they're one of the uh, top passing teams in our conference. You know, we, we know Reese Gervais very well based on our experiences with him in the past and seen him a lot on tape. Um, last year against us, uh, Jason Moore, their top receiver, did not play against us. I believe he had an injury, and uh, he is now going to play this year. And then, uh, you know, Chauncey Bridges. Chauncey Bridges is a, um, you know, home run back. If he gets into the second level of defense, he's extremely fast and can hit some home runs. So. It's an explosive offense. It's an offense that um, you know has some similarities to our offense. A very strong quarterback play, uh, competent running attack. Uh, Chauncey Bridges was the GLIAC player of the, uh, the week uh, two weeks ago, and some wideouts on the edge that can really make some plays. And um, so they're an explosive offense, and our defense will have its hands full. Uh, conversely, what I've seen on tape is I think their defense has progressively gotten better. Uh, at the beginning of the season, um, they're still trying to formulate uh, their personnel, trying to um, you know, work to individual techniques and just trying to uh, figure out the piece of the puzzle. And as the season has progressed, <clears throat> um, they're, they're playing with a lot more confidence now on the defensive side of the ball. So um, I had an opportunity to, to work at a camp with Rob Keyes, the head coach at uh, Finley, and I, uh, he's a good coach. Uh, haven't been around him, and you can definitely tell, uh, even though they're four and four, their players are playing with their hair on fire. Um, you can definitely tell they're committed to each other, committed to um, – you know, Finley football, and they're going to come up here and uh, provide us a really stiff test. Uh, it wasn't too long ago that I remember, the 2011 season, <clears throat> uh, they took a trip to Allendale. Uh, we turned the ball over six times, and they beat us at home. And uh, that was a, a big win for their program, and that was Coach Keys, I believe, first year as the, the head coach. So this is uh, the type of team that's explosive, and when you get explosive teams like this, um, you know, they <coughs> score in bunches. You better be locked in on both sides of the ball. And so... We'll, uh, we'll get to work. <clears throat> the um, special teams wasn't great on Saturday, and we've got a lot of work to do. i got a lot of work to do um, with that unit and some things to kind of clean up on both sides of the ball. But 
uh, much rather be doing that, as I said, 8-0 in the position that we're in and, and instead of the, uh, the alternative. So um, we're, uh, we'll get back to work here and see what we can get done this week. Questions? Coach, uh, I've noticed your, uh, your offensive balance between running and passing is it's almost equal. Uh, is that by design or just kind of the way it's worked out this year? I don't know if it's necessarily, you know, by design. I think with the game planning process, we try to figure out um, a specific number of runs that we like and a spe specific number of passes. And as we generate our openers uh, heading into the contest, you know, we try to figure out what plays are going to be best. But we don't uh, pigeonhole ourselves this area. We're going to have ten openers. There's going to be five run, five passes. We don't, you know, really do that. I, I think it has to do a little bit more with the um, the down, the distance, the opposition, the flow, the feel of the game, how things are going, the situation in the game. Uh, Saturday's game, once we got that two-score lead, we really felt like we needed to, you know, run the ball, <clears throat> control the clock, um, you know, really try to burn some clock. And so I thought both of our backs played extremely well. I mean, I thought Terrell played um, one of the best games he's played in his probably his career. I know from a statistical standpoint, it may not show up that way. But we had a lot of third and shorts and some third down runs that Terrell did a great job and kept us on the field. And, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, zero turnovers. I think that's probably the biggest statistic. So however we get it, we get it. Uh, we don't head into a game trying to say, all right, we're going to try to get 400 yards offense. We want 200 rushing, 200 passing. That's not how we approach the game. Um, we try to get a feel for the flow of the game. And we have good players in a lot of different positions. And so it's in our advantage when you look at our stat sheet, we try to spread the ball around. And it's probably thinking a little bit more, maybe sometimes players rather than plays. Um, this is for both players. Um, when you uh, got behind early in the second half uh, against Hillsdale, was there, was there any concern or any sense of urgency or what was going on? Um, I think there wasn't really a sense of – there was obvious a sense of urgency. I think we have that every time we take the field. Um, but in sense of concern, I don't think so. I think it was just a new feeling for everybody on the sideline. Um, but, you know, we just stuck to the plan. And, you know, I think offensively we just did a good job going out there, just sticking with it and uh, – you know, working with the coaches and not panicking and just running the offense. And, you know, I think we were kind of stagnant in the third quarter, but we ended up putting together a drive right at the end. And then, uh, you know, we capped it off in the fourth and then, you know, kept scoring. So I think it was just a lot of people just sticking to the plan and knowing um, we're going to get it done the way we've done things in the past and, the, you know, this whole season. Um, I didn't see any type of, like, shy aways or pointing fingers. It's more like, we knew we had to keep the sense of urgency to want to draw the, drive the ball down the field and score. And one thing we had to do is execute on third down so we could be able to get a lead instead of going three and out. So that's really the main thing I've seen from it. Uh, Coach, um, Grand Valley teams, at least in recent years, obviously under you, have, uh, have shown an ability to improve towards the end of the year. Are you guys making progress on all fronts there? Uh, you know, I think we're making progress. Uh, you know, when you, tell, you start looking at <clears throat> individual position groups and individual units, um, I, I really feel like, you know, our offensive line has progressed, which you would anticipate. Um, you know, I, you know, looking at the tape, uh, redshirt freshman guard Nate Brady played extremely well uh, on Saturday. I thought he did a good job. You know, obviously we, we ran the ball effectively and uh, we protected Bart well uh, on, on Saturday with that offensive group too. So they've made some improvements. Um, you know, and, and I think some individuals at different uh, positions have gotten better. I think, um, you know, from the wideout uh, perspective, we're able to um, get a lot of different guys involved and uh, we're moving some guys around some positions. And then you defensively, um, you know, you know, the strength of our defense has been all season, our D-line and our linebackers. And uh, I think what we're seeing, like we've mentioned in some of these previous press conferences, Greg, is uh, some younger guys have really, you know, stepped in and shown some improvement throughout the course of it. I'm not... You know, you're not going to see a ton of improvement on some of your top end seniors. You know, they're they're going to have to play consistent, but you want to see the progress and development of the rest of the guys as they start moving through. So, um, you know, the one, one one area on Saturday that I was really disappointed with was our special teams. I don't know that we made a step forward in that area. Um, you know, we just had some sloppy execution. We kind of, uh, to be honest with you, we 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 got. Um, we got beat in some one-on-one -on -one matchups. Um, some Hillsdale guys beat us in some one-on-one -on -one matchups, credit to them. And so uh, we got to improve our individual technique and take a, take a look at what some guys are at. I think that's probably the area um, 
you know, I have the biggest concern with in terms of making that step and making that improvement here as we head into, you know, week 9, 10, 11, the guaranteed games is, um, you know, keep that production of the special teams. We missed a field goal on Saturday, too, which has been un er uncharacteristic of our, our field goal team also. So, um, yeah, I, I, offense and defense are continuing to play well and play together, and got get the special teams cleaned up a little bit. Talking about uh, Finley, coach, for this upcoming weekend, how would you compare uh, Finley? Because they like to chuck uh, the ball quite a bit. Uh, they're almost about 300 attempts passing so far this year. How would you compare them to some of the other teams you've played that have also been more pass-heavy? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. I, I think that they're going to be uh, a lot different than uh, Hillsdale from this pr perspective. Hillsdale, um, you know, I, I think for the Hillsdale game, that was probably a little bit of a game that at times was frustrating for our defensive line and our linebackers. Um, it's a lot of two tight end sets. There's some three tight end sets. Um, not a lot of five-step passes. There was more, you know, sprint outs and boots, um, things like that. So the the – There'll be a divergence in terms of the offensive um, scheme. They're going to run a lot more 10 and 11 personnel, It'll be a little bit more spread out. It'll be similar <clears throat> to some of the earlier schemes that we had seen in the season from a uh, standpoint of like Tiffin runs a little bit more four wides. You got, you know, uh, Northern Michigan runs some four wide attack. It's not an option pace scheme, but it's a true passing quarterback. So, uh, you know, there's, it's apples and oranges to a certain extent, but uh, the scheme is going to mirror some things we saw a little bit more earlier in the season. Um, I happen to think they're probably, um, you know, got some better, better weapons than maybe some of those earlier units had, both at the back position and also the wide out position. But um, we'll allow our defensive line to get back to you know, a little bit more, maybe some one-on-one -on -one matchups and not as many tight ends coming down on them and, and different things where they're trying to move the pocket and uh, a little bit more of a traditional passing attack. If I could, uh, for the two players, confidence level, if I could get the uh, a litmus test from each of you two, your confidence level, you've seen some adversity, obviously, at Ferris State, obviously coming back then in the second half at Hillsdale, but if you could talk up to this point, uh, your, your guys' confidence level. Um, I think the confidence level has always been high, this whole crew, um, especially the offense. Um, and, you know, a lot of that just comes from executing on Saturdays. And uh, I think all the players trust the coaches. And, um, you know, we see on film, it, if, uh, you know, a play doesn't work out, you know, it's, it's really our, our fault. So it's our job to execute the offense. And, uh, you know, everybody's just bought in. And, um, you know, our offense has tremendous confidence in the defense to get us the ball back. And I think our defense has confidence in us that we're going to score most times we get the ball. So, um, you know, it's just a great feeling going into Saturdays uh, with the confidence level that we have right now. Yeah, I believe our confidence level came from executing when times were tough, like when we were called a bad play and a look that we couldn't, we're not supposed to run that play in, but we still ended up getting more yards of it on that play than what we thought we would. And also, I think we all believe in each other and we all know what we're capable of doing individually. And then on top of that, we all know that we play for each other. We all, we all execute and sacrifice for our brothers that we play next to. This is for both players, too. The coach talked a little bit about the improvement of the offensive line, the young, young guys and how they've come together. Both of you obviously work with the offensive line a lot. Um, each of you address, especially in the way it pertains to you. Um, well, I've definitely seen um, you know, an improvement in those guys. I think their confidence level has um, you know, risen since game one. Uh, you know, we got a couple guys in there that haven't really played a lot of snaps until this season. Um, you know, like Nate Brady and Evan Schreiner, um, Nick Fish, new to Grand Valley football, and uh, you know, Ben and Cox were really the only ones that played significant reps last year. So, I think a lot of that comes just with the season. Um, and you know, they're doing a great job. Cox is doing a great job leading them. Um, you know, at halftime, uh, you know, he's he's the one in there uh, getting them pumped up, and you know, not being negative, but also not being over the top, and just doing a good job. Um, you know, really. Being a, I think the other offensive linemen feel accountable to Cox, and you know I think it's just he's done a great job, uh, you know, leading the offensive line. And you know that starts all through the week, and um, you know showing up on Saturdays. Yeah, I think the offensive line they've been playing, playing pretty aggressive, playing assignment sound. And I think one thing about it is we have we do we had we have the luxury of having Cox as the anchor of the offensive line, so he's been able to grind with those guys and get them all on the same page so that we can be able to execute the offense. And we know that it starts in the trenches. And the young guys on the line eight already, I feel like they already adapted they are, with the experience they have. So 
they've been doing pretty good. Coach, you're two-thirds through the GLIAC season. I know you guys don't look at it opponents, but what has everything gone down in the GLIAC as you thought it would in terms of the standings? Well, that's a great question. I mean, it's, it's probably hard to, you know, tell exactly, you know, if there's anybody that's got any insight, it's, you know, us as a coaching staff, it was me as a coach because we know who the returning players are and things like that. You know, I, I um, felt heading into the season when you took at the look at the schools in the state of Michigan that, you know, Ferris was going to have a very strong defense, and I think that that, that has bore it, it, itself out. I, I think we felt like with Wayne's returning starters, you know, they played last year a freshman quarterback, and, um, you know, so he's a little bit year older. And a lot, had a lot of starters back on the offensive line. That, that Wayne State was poised to have a good year with their schedule and kind of things. And that's bore itself out. And that's probably, um, you know, one of the biggest matchups this week in the GLIAC would be Wayne State, you know, heading up to Ferris State uh, that way. I, I think that, you know, um, again, based on the number of returning starters and the experience um, from being a league champion, I, I don't think anybody was is surprised where Ashland is at right now when you take a look at the league standings. And, I'm not surprised by, you know, Ohio Dominican right now is a five and three. They face some tough teams pretty early. Um, you know, I'm biased, including us, but they had to play us and they had to play Ash and they had to play Ferris very, very, very early and they've won some games since then. And uh, you look at the remainder of their schedule, you know, they've got to play Wayne State and there's some things coming up that way. That, and, and, and Tiffin, you know, I think Tiffin dropped a really tough contest to Finley, but with Antonio Pipkin back, you know, I thought there was a chance maybe they might go nine and two, and I'm looking at their schedule, eight and three is a realistic possibility too. So, you know, I, this is still, you know, college football in general, is still, you know, a quarterback driven um, a game. And when you take a look at the GLIAC, um, I think it kind of matches up there. A lot of the teams that are having good seasons are teams that have returning starting quarterbacks and have strength at that position. And uh, that's what's unique too about Finley, I think. Um, statistically, Reister Vase, he can really throw it. And, um, you know, it would be a challenge for our defense coming out on Saturday. Hi, Coach, on a more uh, a serious note here, uh, this upcoming Monday, or week from today, is going to be Halloween. I understand that football is a big-time commitment for both the coaching staff and the players. But if we could, each of you, if you were able to go to a Halloween costume or a Halloween uh, party, what costume would each of you like to wear? Uh, I'll start out because my answer would probably be the lamest of the three. Um, that's a great question. I probably, um, I'm envious of Alton Voss's beard. So in some way, shape, or form, I would try to probably get a, a blackening agent and attempt to color up my beard and uh, you know, try to emulate him. He's got the best, the best look on the team. So you two guys try to beat that. Uh, I was going to dress up as Aaron Cox and shave my head. <laughs> and, um, you know, maybe put on a fake goatee and get some tribal tattoos. I haven't really thought about what I wanted well, to do. Well, you're from Cleveland, so just say it. You dress up as an Indian. Go All ahead, right. do it. <laughs> no, I'd rather dress up as LeBron James. Oh, okay. <laughs> still living off that, that, that championship. Why don't you move on? New, new stuff. <laughs> it's still this year, man. It's, it's 2016 <laughs> no. champion. It starts Wednesday night. It's a whole new season. <laughs> Okay, that will conclude today's media luncheon. Thanks.